Hello. Okay, so last week was like the worst video ever, but this week should be a tiny bit better because I've actually done some mild preparing and I'm gonna try editing a little bit better for the intro and whatnot. Um, okay, so a lot of people think it's super hard to start keto and I don't really think that's fair to say. In my first week, I kind of ate a lot of eggs, but that's just because I really like boiled eggs. And if you don't like boiled eggs, well, then you'll have to find something else that you really like. But for breakfast, I would have um, two um, two boiled eggs and some veggies. And then for lunch, I would make a little bento box that came with an egg, some cheese, some veggies, and uh, some meats. And that was basically kind of what I lived off of for a little while, but I'm not a picky person. So for me, that was super easy. Um, if you want to start and you don't want to get keto flu, I just started cutting things out gradually. First week, no bread and wheat floury stuff. Well, no bread. And then the following week, I just stopped eating pasta and rice, which I never really ate it that much to begin with anyways. And because my stomach bothered me when I ate bread, I was already starting to cut that out. Um, some basic rules that I follow for keto is again no wheat flours, um, avoid vegetables that grow underground or are really starchy like potatoes and carrots are really sugary. So again, you have to start thinking that carbohydrate means sugar because it breaks down into glucose. Just cut it out. Not a big deal. Um, I tried to limit the sugary foods, but again, I was addicted really hardcore to my iced coffee with milk and three sugar or three pumps of whatever that sugar is which is actually 30 grams of carbohydrates per coffee, which I'd only have one a day, but that's your limit right there, basically, right? And there's no nutritional value. There's no fiber or anything. Um, a lot of the foods that I buy, I look at the labels. If you look at the label and you'll see there's like carbohydrates and then there's fibers, well, you take the fiber away from your carbohydrates and that's going to give you what your net carb is. So my son was making fun of me because I'm in love with um, Smart Sweets. They are 33 grams of carbohydrates, but they're 28 grams of fiber, which is amazing because I noticed that I probably needed a little bit more fiber in my life. And I was trying to eat those fiber gummies and I broke myself for about a week. That was not a good idea, but they help, you know, I mean, don't overdo it because when you're a sugar junkie like me, and you're like, oh God, this is so good. But then you realize, yeah, that was a bad idea. Always drink a bottle of water pretty much for every single one of those you eat. But with the Smart Sweets, you can eat an entire package and you're only consuming a small percentage of carbs and you get to have something yummy. It's like basically candy and fiber. Fiber is good. Um, they also say you can dis you can minus sugar alcohols, but nothing has the sugar alcohols mentioned on it except for like that Adkins stuff and yes keto is similar to Adkins but Adkins and Paleo I believe have more um more protein to those diets this one is it should be as close to 75 fats 25 or sorry 20 percent car uh, 20 percent protein and five percent carbs I'm generally under 10% carbs and around 20-25% protein and then whatever I can get in for fat because it's kind of hard to eat that much fat but you start finding ways of adding it into your diet. Um, a really good helping tool is um, I use my fitness pal all the time but for that one I throw all my recipes in so that I can find out exactly what the meals are as far as macros are concerned but um, I also got a, a carb manager. It's basically the same thing as my fitness pal, um, but it has the scanner. So if you need to find out if something is good for you to eat, if you're keto or you want to go keto, it'll show you, it'll give it a grade and you go when you beep it and it'll grade it and tell you if that's something you can go crazy on or if you're like, uh, or please don't eat that at all because you're not going to help yourself. Um, When it comes to actually eating a meal, 
A lot of people like to meal prep. I don't like meal prepping. I just go out and I buy groceries that I can eat. And then when I get home, I just make stuff out of it. Like you have a meat and you have a vegetable and cauliflower is basically my new potato. I can make just about anything with that. I use it for uh, mashed potatoes, potato soup. Um, I make uh, twice baked potatoes with cauliflower and a pressure cooker is really helpful for that. I love my pressure cooker because it makes everything that much more awesome. Um, right up until about January was when I gave up eating heavy sugar. That, that was, I think maybe that's another reason why I didn't get keto food because I had my iced coffee right up until the beginning of January. And then I was like, well, I'm kind of starting to just sort of hit a lull. So I'm going to cut that sugar out. And I started having bulletproof coffee and bulletproof coffee is actually super yummy. Once you start getting in the habit of drinking it. I have mine with a Splenda or whatever low sugar replacement I can find because at work we don't have Splenda and people don't like Splenda. I might even get in trouble for saying eat Splenda, but for me it works. It's uh, two grams of carbohydrates, no one gram of carbohydrates per packet and it's like two teaspoons of sugar. So I went from having 30 grams of carbohydrates to two grams of carbohydrates just in the coffee that I drink and I just stopped having it. Um, I lived at Tim Hortons for the first two months of my keto diet so it's really fun. You can order anything at Tim Hortons a la carte. So I would order really silly stuff like chicken. Yeah, you get bored of eating that all the time. So I would order a a garden salad and I would get them to put their egg patty and a sausage patty on it cut up and I would have that with the balsamic vinegar because it was really good and then I started liking having it with um, the Caesar salad with no croutons because the Caesar salad you get that nice heavy dressing and you get bacon and cheese but then you also get to have I used, usually add sausage to it because that's my crouton and uh, after a while, right, you start getting sick of eating the same sort of things. But every once in a while, I have to get the egg muffin without the muffin. And they put it in a little cup for you. And you get your cheese and your egg and your meat. Um, yeah. I basically, yeah, you start to notice a lot of stuff that people aren't very tolerant when you want to go keto. And they're going to tell you all kinds of crazy things. Um, I've had someone tell me I'm going to get scurvy. Um, I'm going to have a heart attack, uh, a lot of weird stuff people are giving me about how I'm eating. But to be honest with you, um, I'm eating more whole foods than I ever used to because now I have to make everything because they don't pre-make much of anything at all. So if you go to a restaurant, don't stress. You're not really cheating as long as you continue to keep the bread out of your food for the most part and don't get french fries because potatoes are kind of out but you can still steal like steal a fry or two from that other person at the table because you know they're not going to eat all of them anyways and after the first two weeks you know you just stop really wanting that I did do a lot of baking um I'm gonna put some more stuff together and I will talk about the different kinds of stuff that I baked just so that I could get away from doing all the heavy carb eating so peanut butter became one of my best friends and I made peanut butter cookies. I also make cheesecakes. Um, I started to plateau two weeks ago. That's what, February? Because I was still eating a lot of the baking and there's sugar replacements in the baking. And for some reason that was causing me to just kind of stop losing weight. And so then I stopped eating the baking for a while and, um, I've actually found really creative ways of having 90 second bread, which is a great replacement for your regular bread. And that I think saved me as well. That is the easiest recipe you're ever going to make. It's one medium egg, one tablespoon of almond flour. You can use coconut, but coconut has more of a texture that's like um, cornbread. And not everybody likes a cornbread texture because it's got a gritty. And I found that the almond flour makes it more fluffy and light. And a medium egg works better for some reason. It's less eggy and it's more fluffy and uh, airy. 
I also add a little extra magic baking powder. It calls for a half a teaspoon, but I try to go to like a whole teaspoon and maybe even a teaspoon and a half. And um, a tablespoon of butter or margarine, whichever one you work with. This is your lifestyle. You can't just, not everybody can afford grass fed everything. Don't worry about it, you're not gonna die. Um, people will accuse you of having dirty keto because you eat whatever. The whole point here is to have something sustainable, not something that you have to go out of your way to make it harder for you. And I think that's why some people might not succeed in keto because they don't change their life. They just change their diet for a few weeks, they lose the weight and then they go back. But this is just so that you can learn how to just change your whole life. It's going to be probably your favorite thing you've ever done for yourself because it doesn't really cost anything extra to be you, but eat better or better for your body type. Um, again, back to that recipe, you got your tablespoon of almond flour, tablespoon of butter, medium egg, and a teaspoon or a teaspoon and a half of magic baking powder. Um, you mix those together and then you can pour them in any dish you want and it'll give you that shape. So if you, if you pick a smaller, deeper round, and you can cut it in half, you can use that as a sandwich bread and it's really, really good. Um, I like salted butter or salted margarine because then that way it's already seasoned and the bread does have a, a yummier taste. To me, you can use unsalted, whatever makes you happy. Um, and then you put it in the microwave for two minutes. Now, the reason I love this bread so much is because you can do anything with it. Uh, the other day I made a chicken pot pie, so I basically had chicken soup and I topped it with that bread. I just poured it on top and then threw it in the microwave for another two minutes and it came out perfect. Put a little cheese on top. Oh, it was amazing. And then now I've been getting into making a cobbler with it. So I pick some strawberries, add a little bit of, um, I think in total it's about a whole teaspoon of the Splenda brown sugar. So I'll use a half a teaspoon in my strawberries and I'll mix that around. And it'll give it, it's unbelievable how sweet this tastes when you've been out of eating heavy sugar and carbohydrates for like months. And, um, and then I poured, uh, I put a little bit of brown sugar inside the, the mixture and a little bit of vanilla with my 90 second bread. And then I pour that on top of my, um, on top of my strawberries. And then I throw that in the microwave for two minutes and I let that cook. And then I'll make my own whipped cream. So you get your heavy whipping cream. I prefer the natural um, lactose-free. I've been lactose-freeing everything for some reason. I don't know, but it's tastier. Um, it's up to you. Whatever you, whatever makes you happier, it's awesome. So um, yeah, anyways, I put uh, a quarter teaspoon of brown sugar in my whipping cream and a little bit of vanilla. And then I just whip it together and it is unbelievably delicious. Again, you're using so little sugar, but it seems like you have added just the same amount as you did whenever you, before you had your, your keto diet. It does taste exactly the same, but you have to be used to not eating sugar by then. So if you eat, well, it won't taste as yummy if you're eating regular carbs and stuff at first, but as you go along, you'll start noticing that you'll want to cut out more and more sugar and glucose wherever you can, and you're going to feel so much more awesome. Uh, yeah, so I guess that's this week's non-question answering, or not answering, not answering other people's questions. I would love it if people would ask me questions because that's the easiest way to get this sort of to find out what information people want. Um... In the first month, I still ate breakfast, lunch, and dinner because it's bread in our head that we're supposed to eat every four hours. After the first two months, um, I stopped feeling hungry in the morning. So I would just have my bulletproof coffee in the morning and I pretty much don't eat anything until about two or three because I, I just don't feel hungry. And I don't know if you've ever tried being on those diets and they want you eating every four hours, but you're still full from the last time you ate and now you're trying to digest even more food it was getting really hard so I thought I'll just wait till I'm hungry and then I have dinner probably about 6 six thirty, sometimes 7 and then I generally won't eat until the next day when I have my coffee and then whatever it sounds crazy 
But when you're there, you're not hungry and you won't be. And trust me, if you told me I'd be drinking coffee with <laughs> butter and oil in it, I would have told you you're nuts. But here I am and I love it and I feel better. I used to be really swollen all the time and super duper tired and now I'm not. And I think that's the awesome part of all of this is that I can wake up in the morning and I can fully function until at least 10 o'clock at night when I'm ready for bed. And that's unbelievable because for me, I would be, I'd have to nap when I got home. And sometimes I wouldn't even be able to make supper because I was so tired. And now I'm not. And I make all the things that I need. And it helps you get creative. Trust me on that one. Because if you need something, if there's something you really love eating, you're going to find a way to make it in a keto way. And there are so many recipes. All I have to do is type in keto whatever this is and bam you're gonna have somebody's already found a way to make it so you're not being deprived you're not losing out on anything you just have to figure out a way to make it work for you because it's your life and people can't tell you um how to do it unless you're still eating carbs i mean that's the only way you can screw it up is if you eat <laughs> what's not supposed to be eaten because then you won't lose weight so you're the only one who's going to lose out but at least it only takes up to 48 hours to get back into ketosis once you're there so I always thought well I overdid it today but there's always tomorrow and then by the next day I'll be ready to lose weight again anyways so that's this week and uh, please send me some questions because I love answering questions um, I can talk more about all the things that I was doing over my journey going through this stuff too and uh, I hope to hear back from some people. All right. Bye.